monitoring endpoints with CQD. Hello, my name is Seth McClure, and I am a senior service engineer in the Skype for Business product group. The team I'm on has the goal to enhance the customer and partner experience by capturing feedback to influence product direction. We also strive to enable organizations of any size to get to our cloud service by providing best-in-class readiness and deployment services. This session is part of the wider Skype Operations Framework training. We encourage you to review the Skype Operations Framework Overview recorded training. Let's recap on why we created the Skype Operations Framework and what it is. The shift to the cloud changes the way that Skype for Business is delivered. Moving from on-premises deployments to online deliveries, we have been asked to provide practical guidance to assist with planning, delivering, and operating Skype for Business. We created the multifaceted approach of the Skype operational framework to provide that practical guidance and associated tools and assets. Along with a common language of phases and stages to help drive a common understanding of the Skype for Business online lifecycle, to help folks get on board, we have the Skype Academy to host sessions like this one and also technical product training. And finally, we have feedback mechanisms. SOF is a living framework. We are working on updates on a regular basis, so please visit our site on a regular basis to get the latest material. As we are going to find out in today's session, the Skype Operations Framework is a living, breathing framework for Skype for Business Online. We will be adding new content and working on updating delivered assets. We will also be updating the training material to cover major updates. We encourage you to always be working with the latest assets which may have been released since this overview session was recorded. Monitoring Endpoints with CQD. Welcome to the Investigate Media Quality using CQD video series. We created this set of short and easy to consume videos to help you start using and mastering Skype for Business Online call quality diagnostics. To investigate things like media quality and reliability with the aim of driving up the overall user experience. Each video builds on the previous set. We recommend that you watch them in order, but also feel free to dip in. We are here in the sixth of the series. In this video, we will explore device and client endpoint data available in the Call Quality Dashboard, or CQD. After this video, you will be able to track elements in CQD to help create and maintain a healthy endpoint configuration. The elements that we'll be talking about today are client applications, audio devices and drivers, and lastly, wireless adapters and drivers. The first topic we will be covering is how to track client applications in CQD. Tracking client applications helps you understand what types are running in your environment and the versions being used. With this, you can also determine how current versions are, and how quickly updates are adopted by users. The data elements in CQD that enable these views are user agent category, client app version, and user agent. In this demo, we will walk through an example client version report and review the client release page. In this CQD report, we have the three data elements added for the second endpoint in the stream, and we've also added audio stream count as the measure. Like you've learned in previous sessions, the client is always second in a conferencing stream. We have filtered to just look at conferencing streams in this report. As you can see, the user agent category has things like OC, MC, and LWA. OC in this case represents the full Windows Link or Skype for Business client. MC represents the Mac versions of the client. LWA 
represents the web versions of the client or the link web app. The next data element is the client app version. This gives you a, a formatted version number. This fourth version number we will use later in this demo. Lastly, we have the user agent. This is the raw user agent you're probably used to seeing in a client or server SIP log. This one is helpful in understanding things like specifically what a category includes for MCOC and LWA. Let's take a look at the configuration of this report and modify it to show another more isolated view. Here is what the configuration of this report looks like. We have the three data elements in the dimensions that we've been talking about in this video. We also have just the audio stream count so we can track the usage of each one of these. And then we filter down just to look at conferencing streams. Let's go ahead and change this report to only look at one of the user agent categories. We're going to go ahead and add a filter. for second user agent category. Here we'll go ahead and select OC in this example. And now we can go ahead and remove the second user agent category as a dimension. We're also going to go ahead and remove the second user agent as we no longer need it for this report. Now let's go ahead and close this out. And we're going to edit the title to reflect that we're only looking at the OC user agent category. And lastly, before we save the report, let's go ahead and sort this so that the highest usage client version is at the very top. Now let's go ahead and save this report and take a look. Now we can see in this report that Client version 6965-2092 has the highest usage from an audio stream perspective. Let's go take a look at the client release page and see if we can map this to a particular channel and a particular release date. On the Office 365 client update channel releases page, we can then map that particular client version we saw in CQD to a particular channel and a particular release date. Here on the page, I have filtered this to just look at Skype for Business. And I'm also looking at the deferred channel. Here, you will see that client version that we saw before, 6965.2092. We can also see in this particular channel that 2105 was released November 8th and is the most current release for this particular channel. Let's go ahead and look back at the CQD report and see if we see 2105 with usage in our environment. Back in our report, you can see that the version 2105 is the second highest client used in the month of November. You would expect that in December, it would become the highest used client in the environment. And with this tool, you can further ensure that. The next topic we will be covering is how to track audio devices used in your environment. We can use this to track how current device drivers are staying and also see what types of audio devices are being used. This is especially important if users have been given a certified device to leverage for audio calls. The data elements that we'll be using are capture device and capture device driver, which represent the microphone device and driver version. You also have render device and render device driver, which represent the speaker device and driver version. In this demo, we will look at an example audio device report, identify well-known onboard audio devices, and lastly, take a look at the Skype for Business Solutions catalog. In this report, I have added the second capture and render device as elements, and I'm using the audio stream count as my measurement. In this environment, you can see the highest used device is built-in microphone and speaker. 
The second and third are high definition audio devices. These are also commonly built in speakers and microphones. These are all examples of devices not approved by Skype for Business. The fourth device is the Sennheiser SC60 for Link. The name implies that it's certified, but let's check. This is the Skype for Business Solutions catalog. Here you can validate which devices have been certified or tested for Skype for Business. Let's see if we can find the Sennheiser SC60. Here it is. From here, we can see a lot of details about this device. One thing of note is you can also see what versions of the Link or Skype for Business application that this device has been tested for. Now let's go back to CQD and take a look at other report configurations and possible dimensions that you could use. Here is the query configuration for the report that we just saw. There are two additional data elements that could be used as dimensions or filters to track capture and render devices. The first is using building data. As you know, it's possible to upload subnet mapping data into CQD. After this is done, you can track adoption of devices in specific sites, buildings, or regions. The next dimension I'd like to talk about is the capture device driver and render device driver. You can use these to track what specific driver versions are being used in my environment. You can also add the render and capture device as filters to track a specific device and the drivers being used for it. The last topic we will be talking about is how to track wireless adapters. Like with audio devices, this can be very useful in understanding what wireless device drivers are in use in your environment. The two data elements for tracking this are Wi-Fi vendor driver and the Wi-Fi vendor driver version. In this demo, we will look at an example report that shows what wireless adapter drivers are in use. In this report, we are looking at the Wi-Fi driver and Wi-Fi driver version. I have filtered the report to just conferencing streams where the client endpoint is using wireless. As you can see, this exposes the manufacturer and driver versions used. This can be useful in validating freshness of drivers in your environment. In this section, we have learned three types of data we can monitor about the media endpoint in CQD. From this, you can now make sure client applications are staying current, track what audio devices are being used and whether they are Skype for Business certified. And lastly, track wireless adapter driver versions being used in your environment. I hope you have enjoyed this section. As we said early, SOF is a living framework and we continue to work on updating assets and delivering new offers. One key that drives our updates is feedback from you. Please visit the feedback site above or use the feedback link of the main site to access our feedback channels. We would love for you to share your thoughts and ideas on what you would like to see in future releases. The feedback channels are voting enabled, so if you like an idea already shared, then please vote on it to show your support. We are proud to launch the new SOF community as part of developing the multifaceted approach to SOF. The SOF team is looking forward to hearing from you on how you are applying SOF guidelines to your projects and share lessons learned. Please sign up and take part. In order to stay up to date, please leverage the following resources. The first link points you to the SOF website. Here you can download all our SOF materials. The second link points to our blog. Look here regularly for new articles or configure an RSS reader to get notified of updates. Finally, the last link points to our training site where you can find the latest on soft and technical trainings.
Thank you for listening.